I rap stuff. I deliver that stuff. Not your nice is the Jingle Crumbs. Hello, welcome to Roman's Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to Roman's Christmas, a delightful furry Christmas special. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a dog. Look at the po the pointer. The pointer's even a little paw. <laughs> I love oh the my flavor, God. dude. I love the flavor. You gotta, you gotta. So we don't know anything about this game other than that it is a furry visual Christmas novel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited, so excited too. Dude, I just want to say shout out, shout out to, yeah, shout out to the furries in our audience. Yes. You uh -huh. know you know who you are and I am. <laughs> shout out to every fur and I just want to say, all right, I wanna I wanna put this out there right now because I wanna I wanna show the love to the furry community, first of all. Because I think there is no other community out there that is so invested in what they're doing and also so invested in like the counterculture surrounding what they're invested in like it's 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 almost like the sonic the hedgehog community where it's like i love sonic and also isn't it funny sonic like that's the <laughs> that's that's the vibe i get from the furry cult and i and i and i love it and i love every furry in the world i think they're all I'm, wonderful I, yeah i'm sure you meant to say furry culture and not furry cult <laughs> oh did i say furry cult yeah you got your brain started your next sentence a little oh, early yeah no but I, I knew where you were that. going mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um uh yeah i uh i am slowly coming to grips with what i m must have always been <laughs> so let's start <laughs> roman's christmas oh, god i love it look at this little guy wait investigating <laughs> crime scene are we just like getting thrown in right now all right i really am not right well okay uh the snow had stopped <sighs> A lonely lupine <laughs> detective slowly pushed his way against the snow. It was a familiar pathway he followed, his footsteps heavy on the snow-buried stone pavement as he approached his destination. Orf? <laughs> Wait, can you, uh, can you move your, uh, the, the mouse cursor? Well, I'm using it to click. Like, wait, is that on my screen? What? I see a second mouse cursor. Oh, that must be Sitting yours. in the center of the screen. Oh, but so that's not there for you? I'm moving the paw around. Well, how do I move? I can't get that other mouse cursor out of there because I'm parsecced into your computer. Wh oh, this is a fine pickle. How big is it? Like as big as the screen? <laughs> no, no, it's small. It's just like dead center. Oh. So it's just like, here's an arrow. Maybe click. Maybe just click. Oh, wow. That worked. Yeah. There you go. Aaron, you're a genius. Hey, man, I do what I can. Day one, 23rd December, 1285. The day of two Christ. days from furry Christmas. <laughs> it's oh two, yeah, there, there you go. It's two days until Christmas and two days until the end of my fast. As the, man, it must be tough to be a a lupine and fast. Lupines love to do eat, you, dude. Do you know what lupine is? Yeah, it's a pup, right? It's it's. I believe it's wolf. Uh, canine would be pup. Oh, what? Yeah, I didn't know that there was a difference. Between wolves and dogs? No, no, I know there's a difference between wolves and dogs. <laughs> I just thought lupine was just like, oh, it's a dog-like creature. Could be. I could be wrong. I, I'm probably uh, wrong. You're the furry here. You know more about it than I do. Oh, man, man. Don't don't put that shit on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> 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 I mean, I love this stuff. I, I, don't ju I just don't know en enough about it to right, be an authority. Right. Yeah, you're not the, you're not the, the, the furry wiki. <laughs> Definitely not. All right, all you, bud. As nice as it is to feast on Christmas, I can't stomach a month-long fast. That's ironic. A whole month without any meat would certainly turn any wolf into a hare. Next time, I'm not fasting for a month just to solve a case. Lucky for me, I closed my last case before it ruined my vacation at the White Star Tavern. I'm not gonna let another case interrupt my- Get to the animal piece of fucking- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Where's the animal sex? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of Christmas is this? <laughs> the best oh gift would be God. some- to uh. see some- okay. <laughs> not even a murder. I pulled my fur coat tighter. Wouldn't that be like wearing a like a human coat as a person? 
Yeah. I I don't know how I don't know how to process that. Yeah. And continued to walk against the cold wind towards the distant tavern. I finally saw the sign of the white star just as the warm breath coming out of me began to froze against my snout. I wonder Did, why what? the <laughs> Having some tense issues there. <laughs> yeah. I wonder why the tavern well, I think this is translated from from Chinese. Um, oh, perfect. So <laughs> it makes a little sense. I wonder I why love the, it. I wonder why the tavern keeper won't move to a better spot. If it weren't for their excellent cider, a tavern this far from downtown wouldn't last a year. <laughs> the door's hinges creaked as I pushed it open. The warm scent of fireplace smoke, cooking bacon, and wheat bread encircled me. All right, I'll admit, I fucking love this. <laughs> <laughs> Several oil-painted portraits of white-furred dragons decorated the walls, as you can see, with, with one exquisitely painted. Oh, God! Oh! Haven't seen you for a while. What would you like to have today? Tar Tarson. <laughs> <laughs> Consonant man. <laughs> Hold on, it's like, it's like, huh? Tarson! <laughs> was dusting yeah. one of his precious portraits when I entered the tavern. <laughs> he paused just long <laughs> enough to speak, then continued his work. Um, what? it's pronounced Zer. <laughs> 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 it's pronounced <laughs> <laughs> Why does an azure scaled dragon like him love white furred dragons so much? Maybe I'll never know. Wait, so am I a dragon? No, no, this is like the bartender or whatever. I know, but they said that the azure scaled dragon loves the white furred dragons. So am I a white furred dragon? I I said it was a I was a lupin and a wolf, so I guess I'm a wolf. Yeah, I think you're I think you're a white wolf. Yeah. Same as usual, but my fast doesn't break until the day after tomorrow. Got it. <laughs> Sarson pulls down, put down the <laughs> duster, then wiped his hands with a cloth at the counter before grabbing a beer mug and making his way towards the cellar. I hung my coat on the hat stand and sat beside the fireplace to warm myself that's not, up. Uh, that's where you're supposed to put your hat! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That what a coincidence! Oh, is it? Uh, what? <laughs> All right. What is the? What a coincidence to meet you here. What about buying me a drink to celebrate this moment? Anzac. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like when you try to make words out of your leftover Scrabble letters. <laughs> is Anzac a word? Uh, no. <laughs> do you want to check the dictionary? Because I don't think. Enzox must have heard me come in and rose up from the corner to approach me, bringing his loot with him. He's a bard, but one without a patron to support his artistic career. He's also something of a defective fanatic, though I- Detective fanatic. Detective fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> I love things that are broken, though I doubt if he has the necessary talents to actually be one. Nowadays, he travels between taverns to sing for his supper, all while hoping to find some rich noble patron who will appreciate his talent and shower him with wealth. <laughs> That's you still. Oh, oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> I'm flattered that Roman, the great detective, still remembers me. <laughs> I'd never forget a guy who can distract me every time when possible. Not on purpose, but still impressive. Of course I do. You left such an impression on me last time when I was trying to solve that case and you... <laughs> Is this a gay furry Christmas <laughs> novel? Because I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that, please no! Enzox fled, clutching his loot. Great. Saved a pint for myself. It's almost dinner time, but there's no other customers here. Is it because of the heavy snow or the myriad paintings on the wall? <laughs> I'm starting to feel thirsty after staying by the fireplace for too long. What's keeping Tsars from bringing up the booze? <laughs> As I looked around, I spotted a guy covered in a priestly robe and veil, wearing a silver <laughs> cross, and curled up at a corner table. 
I can't make out his face in the candlelight. His mug of cider is still full and untouched. Who in the hell would- is that a disguise? Hasn't he heard the saying about tigers changing their stripes? Sir- Oh boy. <laughs> came out from behind the counter and handed me a mug of cider along with a note. That's elegant. If you find out anything regarding her, keep it to yourself. Her? Whatever. I've seen stranger things. I shoved the note up my sleeve, drank a gulp of cider, and purposely let out a loud belch. <laughs> I relaxed in my usual chair, enjoying myself in the quiet and familiar atmosphere of the White Star Tavern. Looks like we're the only people here tonight. The logs People is a loose term. <laughs> yeah, that's exact. People refers to humans, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm just under that impression. <laughs> the logs in the fireplace were making tiny crackling sounds, as you can hear. Sir, <laughs> sat behind the counter reading. I'd say. <laughs> sat behind the counter, re reading the cookbook his father left him. Anzox was playing his lute. Elegant had gone upstairs for a while. A while ago. Maybe I'll what? live- it was, it was three seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, well, I was- just, she's still wait, making her way up those stairs. <laughs> While I was monologuing for 12 minutes. <laughs> Maybe I'll live here after I retire. If I have the money. Assuming the White Star keeps its comforting atmosphere till then. Come to think of it, what should I do to kill the time before dinner is served? I brought a book called A Brief History of Apollyon with me to do some reading during my vacation. <laughs> Although I don't really think this little book can tell me anything about my homeland, I don't already know. I hope this I entire also... game takes place with this background. <laughs> yes, it's just, just this fucking wolf talking to himself for now. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Sarzen coming in every so often being like, hey, here's a beer. You need anything? <laughs> no? Alright. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've been here for a while. Uh, maybe you want to clear out or... You gonna order something? <laughs> <laughs> maybe you've had enough. I could also check out White Star's special Christmas menu. I can't have any meat for another two days, but a glimpse of a good menu and a little bit of imagination won't break the rules. This is like a Maybe visual I'll... novel of the guy that comes into Barnes and Noble to just read the books in the cafe and then leave <laughs> <laughs> without buying anything. Every so often, like the Barnes and Noble <laughs> employees, like kind of circle around and they're like, uh, "Is this sir? Um... Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll just take a nap." I could use a good nap after losing sleep for almost a month. What should I do before dinner? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Some hard-hitting choices here, Aaron. Well, <laughs> yeah, in this- in this video game, I have the choice of reading a book, uh, looking at a menu of food that I can't eat, or, or taking a Or giving up and sleeping. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know, man. They're all so enticing. Yeah. Uh, I'll look at the menu, maybe. Sure. I might as well take a look at Sarzen's Christmas menu. I scan through the thoroughly changed menu on the wall. Oh. Oh, hey. Pale ale, cider, wine, wheat bread, apple pie, and lamb chops. Nice and festive. From inside the kitchen came the warm scent of rich stews and spices. Satisfying in the way that only home-cooked dishes can be. You know, when I see, like, roast hare and, like, duck, does that mean that we're not gonna see, like, a rabbit character or a duck character? Because <laughs> that feels really fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> They're just screaming. <laughs> My child! Yeah. F what What are those uh, monetary symbols? Is that Chinese? I I think it's just a made-up currency, if I'm being honest. Oh, okay. Could be. It, it looks like st <laughs> 15th. Well, we have had tons of requests for furry visual novels that mm -hmm. are Christmas-based where you can order schnitzel. <laughs> <laughs> so... We've got good news for you folks. We yeah. got your letters. I- I'm- I'm curious, okay? So, clearly there's like... There's- it's like this belt thing that's going around, um, this- this dragon's, uh, shoulder. It's just kind of like a design thing. I'm like, oh, that's a right. cool outfit. Yeah. Why is there a belt going around the dragon's wing that's like restricting it from opening? 
I bet it's for like when they put rubber bands around a lobster claw, so it doesn't just. <laughs> <laughs> what like, can Sarzen not control himself? <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe he'll get scared and his wings will come out and knock stuff around his own restaurant. <laughs> Just trying to think out loud. I'm more, I'm more consumed with the fact that the only animation they made were the eyes blinking, so they're really overdoing it. <laughs> yes. Like, every second it's like, blink! Yeah, it's Blink. So windy in here, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sorry, it's just very dusty. It's like sand. Sarzen came out of the kitchen and brought me a plate of smoked herring and pale ale. Oh, Did you thanks. order that? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> that That's almost meat, huh? Pity I can't serve you clams in this cold weather. Is that some kind of sick joke? <laughs> At least it's better than carrot. I hope we don't meet like a clam person. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys! He's always spitting water. How's it going? <laughs> I wonder if there are clam furries out there. <laughs> They call them crusties so. or something. <laughs> if not, I want to be the first. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Fortunately, we still have some smoked herring. I'd have to serve you carrot stew otherwise. Bon appetit. He returned to the kitchen and brought Anzox a bowl of lamb stew. I'm jealous. Elegant came downstairs, hesitated a moment, then took a seat at a corner. Table. She glanced at me, and I quickly looked elsewhere. Quick, quickly looked elsewhere. Yes. Uh, chapter Ooh. zero. <laughs> chapter zero. We've almost made it to the first chapter. <laughs> oh my god, so cute. <laughs> That's elegant. Meow. Yeah. Adorable. Ah. <gasps> After dinner, I sank into a rocking chair near the fire and let myself relax. The logs in the fire, heavy with pine resin crackled and popped as the chair slowly swung back and forth with a creaking noise. <laughs> Not a whole lot of customers this month. Sarzen here, Here's a list of all the people that have stayed here. <laughs> <laughs> Sarzen brought a chair and sat down next to me, gazing into the fireplace. Don't worry so much. Just give it a couple days and you'll have as many customers as you had in the years before. I get the feeling this year might be a little different. Can't really tell why, though. <laughs> Is something going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the howling winds outside are keeping the customers away. Anzox heard our conversation and came to join us with his loot. As you can clearly see, I don't know why I had to state this out loud. <laughs> And then Elegant showed up, and she's just, like, mashed into the background because there's no room left. <laughs> as if something as minor as high winds could stop folk from having cravings for Sarzen's famous home cooking. <laughs> Flatter me all you like. You're still not getting a discount. Well, I was being sincere! <laughs> Though I wouldn't mind a discount. Oh, oh my god, Anzox. <laughs> All Anzox is here to do is find a sugar daddy and get everything paid for. Mm -hmm. The White Star has a variety of activities to entertain overnight guests and those who stick around after dinner. There's a darts competition Saturday evening. If all the players are friendly and there are no authorities around, Sarzen would cover some tables with blue flannel and take bets. I doubt anybody like that would be out in this weather. I elbowed Sarzen quietly and Gave him a wink. Not tonight. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this Roman is fucking everybody. <laughs> yeah. I think wow. that's the implication. Take, take it easy, Wolfman. <laughs> he glanced towards Elegant before whispering to me with one hand hiding his mouth. After all, we don't know her that well. Let's hold off on the gambling for the time being. Well, if you... Th think of something else, let me know. I'll see if I can keep myself occupied. What do you want to do tonight? I want to talk oh to Elegant. Boy. <laughs> Having no idea right <laughs> <laughs> Having no idea now. <laughs> Perfectly translated uh, of course from the original talk to text. Elegant. By the way, I don't know Elegant very well. I'll ask her quietly when Anzox won't notice. I walked towards the round table she was sitting at before pulling out a chair and tit taking a seat and offering my hand. Hello. 
I'm Roman. I waited for Elegant to reach out for a handshake, but it seemed she didn't want to. My right hand hovered in the air as awkwardly as the silence. Cats and dogs, man. Hello! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hello. Oh. I apologize if I'm disturbing you. I was about to push my chair away and end the embarrassing conversation before it started, but paused as she motioned for me to stay seated. She looked me up and down, slowly. I could almost feel the weight of those lake blue eyes through that thin veil. As a detective, she used... walked over seductively to her litter box, shit three times, <laughs> then returned. She threw up on the floor, <laughs> ate it, and resumed the conversation. <laughs> she I was intrigued. <laughs> As a detective used to observing others, I don't know how uncomfortable it is to be examined so thoroughly by such a sharp and intense gaze. You are on good. <laughs> <laughs> good terms with the owner of <laughs> this tavern, are you not? God, I'm in love. Well, <laughs> you could say that, but how can you tell? The way you pass. <laughs> Information is too obvious. Well, the way you pass those little nuggets is <laughs> more obvious. Just I hairballs. I felt naked. It was like... Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. It was... Just picture it. It was like her <laughs> eyes were peering through me and into my soul. You need not fret. I do not care about your business. I would imagine a detective like you has more than a few informants. I didn't notice until now that I was involuntarily biting my left thumb. Don't believe wolves have thumbs. <laughs> well... It's fine. It was bleeding. It's a nervous tick I've had since I was young. Still haven't managed to break the habit. No need to be polite. Just tell me why you came to me. Well, if you insist. Relieved, I unclenched my fist and took out my handkerchief to wipe the sweat from the pads. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, do pads sweat? I don't think that's a thing. I don't know. I have... Uh, apparently dogs don't sweat. Um... Except through their feet. And their nose. Which is... Is that right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I don't know if I'm exactly right about that, but I have noticed that Camilla never stinks, uh, but her feet smell fucking terrible. Oh so... My God. Yeah, we have to wash her feet a lot to make sure, because they smell like Fritos. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know that Frito dog foot smell? <laughs> Is that a, you ne never experienced that? I just imagine you going to like Subway or something and you like open, crack open a bag of Fritos and you're like, ah! Oh, trust me, dude, they're <laughs> ruined for me. <laughs> ruined. <laughs> Actually, I came here to ask. Uh, geez. Your fucking... race, your cider, or your gender? <laughs> Boy, those are three very different questions. <laughs> really getting to the heart of it, huh? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, your, your, your cider, I guess. I don't know why he mentioned cider at all. Not interested in actually drinking from your glass. I prefer to remain sober in case something unexpected. Then why did you order the cider? <laughs> <laughs> and this, all right, whatever. And this, <laughs> it's just for the look. I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> At this moment, Anzok suddenly <laughs> came. <laughs> Still deep in conversation, are we? I thought you were talking about nothing, so I thought I'd join in. Oh my god. Trust How me. How long until someone says something that makes him uncomfortable, his eyes go kooky, and he disappears? <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm sorry, Anzox. We were talking about her race, her gender, and her cider, so. Oh! Oh shit! <laughs> Just pieces out immediately. Trust me, we've got plenty to talk about. Like just now, when we were talking about the drink she's not drinking. <laughs> and then followed by a bunch of silence until you came over. <laughs> by the way, I've heard a puzzle in a tavern from another town. Would you be interested? Sorry, what? we're kind of in the middle of... <laughs> What's the puzzle? Elegant seemed interested, taking her mug and sitting down with Anzox by the fire. Oh god, too many voices to do. <laughs> <laughs> Please, 
playing a puzzle game again, Antox? <laughs> Sarzan just finished cleaning the kitchen and came to sit by the fire. <laughs> yes, you came just in time! <laughs> I'm not really in the mood. Hear a story or go to rest. Dude, yeah, I'm fuck all you people! <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm gonna listen to the stories. It's not like you've got anything better to do. You can just listen and let us solve the puzzle if you want. <laughs> Oh I just love that so much of this game is like, don't engage with the game. <laughs> like it's yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, and only one person can blink at a time, and they will do it constantly. <laughs> I'd better do. That's all you. I'd better do it myself than leaving it to you guys. Let's start, Anzox. Anzox cleared his throat, then caressed his loot and said. <laughs> he clears his throat, like f breathes fire all over. Uh, <laughs> elegant. One night in a small farming town famous for its barley, the only windmill in the town came to a stop. We could bring the morning to the in the city. This was the first time. <laughs> the first time it happened. Got my glasses to move in the city. In the city. Since the mill was so vital to their work, the villagers rushed out to check the mill. From afar, the villagers saw the windmill blades were no longer rotating. Mm. They thought that the sudden wind and snow had broken the transmission shaft that ran the mill. Okay. I'm sorry, why is everyone animals? Do they, does everyone need to be animals for this game? <laughs> so the villagers thing, came dude. to the... <laughs> the villagers came to the mill, the ground covered in thick snow over their ankles. The dark wooden mill towered over them in the white expanse. The blades turned in an ominous position, looking like an inverted cross. I assumed this was a puzzle, not some bar tale you used to coax coins from drunkards. <laughs> Elegance tip swished as she impatiently drummed her fingers on the tabletop, while Tsart stayed and sat and listened <laughs> intently, attentively. <laughs> Have you ever seen, you know, Stefan, the, yeah. the character? Mm -hmm. Yeah. New York's hottest club is. <laughs> Kills me. It's not as though you're paying me, so just sit and listen. Ahem, allow me to continue. As they drew closer, they found the windmill's maintenance gondola was tied with a hemp rope to secure it. Please click the clue button to view specific evidence. Oh, is there a clue button? Is this evidence? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Safety rope. Okay. But then they s saw the miller who ran the mill was suspended upside down in the middle of the air. Way up the middle of the air. <laughs> like when Ezekiel saw the wheel. His eyes were wide open with fear. His face contorted as though he was screaming in terror. His paws were stiff and <laughs> hanging down the level with the edge of the windmill blades. The snow from yesterday clung to his cold body. How ironic that the object used to ensure safety had become a lethal weapon. No one could imagine that. What the fuck? Corpse position. The miller's body was hanging upside down. His hands level with the windmill blades. Okay. <laughs> lethal. Wait Elegant's a... face really says it all. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I... Just wish uh, I wasn't here anymore. <laughs> yeah. Tarzan's definitely thinking about different things. <laughs> Tarzan's like, Just, what if we're gonna get more customers? Yeah, other stuff. Wait a minute, Anzox. Did the safety rope really cause the death of the miller? Do you disagree, Roman? After all, the safety rope was tied to the miller's dead body. Yes, but why can't the safety rope be the murder weapon? Because uh, it's, it's tied to the ankles. ankles. It can't be deadly if it's tied to the ankle. It's like that sport from overseas. What do they call it? Bungee jumping? Correct. Did they have bungee jumping in 1234 or whatever year this is supposed to take place in? <laughs> A safety rope is typically tied to the ankle or waist. Considering the position of the body, the only possible way was tied to the ankle. <laughs> that is indeed true, but there must be something that killed the miller. Yeah, on account of that he was dead? We can discuss that next. Go on then, Anzox. Well, the Miller was a big fan of... Uh, what's that contemporary 
12th century sport from across the way. Oh, uh, uh, half pipe skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, the miller had died in the windmill, where he had spent his nights and days. <laughs> he spent his nights and days playing that age-old sport, <laughs> Counter-Strike Go. <laughs> <laughs> the local police initially determined that the old miller was trying to repair the windmill while he was drunk. He had slipped, lost his footing, and fallen from the repair gondola. However, the cause of death was still unclear though his head might have struck the windmill. The townsfolk invited one of the greatest detectives in the realm to investigate the scene. He was an old-fashioned detective, and refused until he was paid no less than 13 rayar and all travel expenses. I guess that's the, that's the currency. Uh, no, the currency is see it. Oh. Oh, the thir 13 ray. I thought Elegant was talking because she put her paw <laughs> over her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> she was all pissed off until that very moment where she was like, Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. And then she just starts like licking her paw to clean it. <laughs> this is the thing where she starts like putting her paw on her ear and Batting shit. her nose, yeah. <laughs> 13 rayar. That's 910 sit. For just one case, that detective could eat fried lamb chops every meal for a month, if he hadn't vowed to fast until Christmas. You shut the fuck up, Sarzen. <laughs> Do they not? I thought they were worth the price. Anzok started to laugh, but stopped when I glared at him. When the townsfolk came to his humble residence, he was seated behind his great desk, playing with a prism he had bought from the capital's Grand Bazaar. How bizarre. How bizarre. Every time I look around- Every time I look around, <laughs> sunlight from the small window passed through the lens and scattered into a rainbow of color. I'm sorry, I thought we were talking about a miller that was like hung by his ankle. Yeah, this is- things are changing. You gotta <laughs> stick with it. Stay- okay. stay frosty. <laughs> After listening to the villager's account, the detective struggled to get up from his easy chair with a cane, then asked his only servant to call the carriage. And also, like, I don't know. <laughs> Why isn't this the game? Why are we talking about something else that happened in a bar with one background and three characters? Elegant has a look on his face- uh, on her face that just seems to say, I feel like something should have happened by now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've been playing this for half an hour. This would be one of his few field investigations. One problem was that the description of the crime scene is not detailed enough to his liking. Another problem was that the case sounded so bizarre. And the mm. biggest problem was that the glib board could not get to the point. The glib, oh, the glib board? <laughs> Sorry, glib board is what I keep at home for all my glib statements. Yeah. I like when she smiles and you can see her one little snaggle yeah, tooth. Yeah, little tooth. Yeah, super cute. Then why don't you tell the story? <laughs> she reminds me of Blin Cat. Have you ever seen Blin Cat? No, what's that? It's this little cat that has this sort of smug look on its face and then there's like a, a plate of blins in front of it. <laughs> And it's just like the most wonderful picture and there's this meme of, of this guy speaking Russian and he's, he's just telling the story of Blin Cat and it's hilarious. Anyway, I'll send I, it to wait. you later. I would love that. Isn't... Is Blintz pu plural? I thought a single Blintz was still called a Blintz. Unless I'm thinking of something completely different. A Blin is like a... it's like a pancake. Yeah. I don't know. I might be wrong about that. That's okay. Someone in the comments will know for sure. <laughs> the sudden is anyone of, of Polish slash Russian heritage? Yeah. The sudden Thank interruption oh. made and is any are any of you of Polish slash Russian descendants and also a furry and also familiar with Blincat and yeah. also like way into this. Also, how do you register someone blushing with anger when they're a red dragon? <laughs> <laughs> I blush green. <laughs> the sudden interruption made Anzox blush with anger. It's fine. The details make the story more vivid, even if they are irrelevant. Oh, Boy, okay. you could have said that about this game, too. The day after the body was discovered, the detective arrived at the town in the afternoon. Do you think if Sarzen's, like, short on cash at some market or whatever, he just, like, pulls a diamond off his cheek and is like, oh, this'll cover it. 
<laughs> He's definitely short on cash. He couldn't even buy a vowel to make his name make sense. <laughs> He learned from the gossip in the tavern that on the night of the miller's death, two people had spent the night at the mill, but they both had alibis. Each other. <laughs> I was at the mill with this guy. I was at the mill with this guy. <laughs> and we both didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, and we never killed him. <laughs> Who were they? What? One was the miller's daughter. The other was the miller's apprentice. They had spent the night in the mill as usual. Killing the miller. About those two people. I'd like to know. Um, there's no need to know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You've wasted everybody's time. <laughs> the Miller's daughter. I'd like to know about the Miller's daughter. Elena. Elena. Oh. The Miller's daughter. She's 16 years old and a gray wolf. She had no shortage of suitors in the town and even <laughs> caught the eye of a few local nobles. Oh. And not just because of her father's wealth, she was renowned for her beauty. She'd been the dream girl for every bachelor in the town since she was 14 years old. That might sound inappropriate, but in wolf years, she's like 120. <laughs> 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 she, she, she had a good relationship with her father, or at least other outsiders thought so. Yeah. I would also want to know about The Apprentice. What about what The about Miller's oh. Apprentice? <laughs> The apprentice's name was Hans. He came to the mill from the next town eight years ago. At that time, he was just ten years old and all alone in the world. No parent could be so cruel if it weren't for money. For uh, yeah, I don't understand. Fortunately, the miller treated it well. The apprentice was also very clever. He always seemed to be able to succeed, no matter how complicated the miller's orders. Recently, there was a rumor that he had a close relationship with the miller's daughter. Let me think. Go on. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I don't know where to go uh, with this. I, I wish I could just screenshot this exact <laughs> screen. <laughs> go on, please. With like three animal characters just kind of <laughs> looking in different directions. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, oh, the first deduction. The miller was killed soon after he returned home since he was stolen his coat. Every person in the town- I'm assuming I have to solve this. Yes. At some point. Uh, he may have accidentally slipped and fell from the hanging basket while repairing the windmill. Cause of death is unknown. Maybe his hex struck the mill. Miller's daughter seemed to have a special bond with the miller's apprentice. Okay. And then, are the characters also the- Oh, look, it's me! Wow, I'm so handsome. Aww. Adorable. 32 years old. Elena was the ah. uh, was the miller's daughter, the gray wolf. Hans was the miller's apprentice. Uh, gained miller's favor due to his diligence, and the miller was the one who died. Okay. Go on, please. I have to say, those two caught my interest. Please go on. What about the miller's reputation? The miller had lived his entire <laughs> life in the town and had no enemies. He was well regarded by the townsfolk. <laughs> I think... I think Elegant, like, <laughs> ate some mushrooms or, like, some E or something <laughs> yeah, when, she, when she put the paw to her mouth. <laughs> she's definitely vibing. <laughs> <laughs> she's just like, yeah, go on. Yeah, some go, Miller Street. Go, go on, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. His <sighs> wife died of pure pearl fever. <laughs> Shortly after she gave birth to Elena, and he had lived as an old bachelor ever since. He had several drinking friends who he'd met in the pub almost every night after supper, drinking and talking until the tavern closed. Mm. Every now and then he'd like to bash his head against the windmill and hang upside down. <laughs> it sounds as if the <laughs> it went a little like too far tent. one night. Oh, I think I <laughs> solved it. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like some of the tavern's regulars. Some folks at the tavern provided the detective with additional information. <laughs> the miller had been extremely generous recently, and one day he even bought everyone in the tavern a round of ale in celebration. That's all the information on those present. So, is the implication that he just offed himself? Oh man, I do not know. Having gotten his fill of gossip from the noisy drinkers in the tavern, the detective left the tavern and went walking towards the mill. Within 10 minutes, the detective arrived at the mill. 
it was clear Windless Warning. I, I just love the idea of him being a, a storyteller bard and he has no idea how to pace or like put <laughs> emphasis on He's the right words in a sense. Very unconfident while speaking. The snow at the gate of the mill hadn't been swept away. <laughs> By the overzealous villagers, the detective relieved and cautious checked the snow from the outside. Oh, there's a map now. <laughs> the snow was unexpectedly clean. Apart from the footprints left by the villagers who found the corpse in the outer circle and the footprints that went all the way to the front of the house, okay. there was nothing except some messy traces in front of the last footprints. It seemed that there was no shortcut or alternate entrance. The detective put on his hat and came to the mill door. He glanced down by accident before entering the door. <gasps> there seems to be a circular imprint around the last footprints in front of the door, and the stone used to hold the door open had also been moved. <gasps> Stepping inside, the detective met Elena, who was covering her face and crying, and Hans, who was comforting her. The body of Old Miller. <laughs> that was his name, I guess. <laughs> the body of Old Miller was still hanging on the windmill, swinging like a pendulum in the wind. I, I'm just waiting for the moment where Sarzen's like, oh, another customer, and then just leaves and starts serving Yeah, I'm, them. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Do you want to listen to their testimony first, or go straight to the scene? I don't know! I don't know either. I didn't think this would be the game. <laughs> I'm just so confounded. Oh my god. The fucking elegant over there still vibing, but like kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> like like doing that thing where they, they like clench their fist really hard to sort of like build up the patience to deal with this. Yeah. <laughs> like all the stress and anguish of the situation is just showing up in that movement. <laughs> Um, God, I don't know. Do I want to listen to the testimony or just want to go straight to the scene? Boy. Let's go straight to the scene. Okay. Let's investigate the scene first. Oh, we can do the testimony later. I see. <laughs> Thank God. Well, I agree, Elegant, with your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you want to ask Elegant for advice? After all, the ladies first, although with her appearance, it's difficult to... Even through the veil, Elegant's fierce glare pierced Anzox like the shaft of an arrow. He quickly shut up. Oh God, I, can, I better get out of here! <laughs> the detective first went up the stairs to check the scene of the death. The scene of the death? Yeah, yeah. First, first rule first rule of forensics detective work, don't call it the scene of the death. <laughs> Anzox qu quickly sketched something on a piece of paper and handed it over. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> yeah, I know. It just just took a minute for me to see what I what I was seeing. That that's the wolf's head. Yes. But he was hanging from his ankles. Right. But so also the head would be. And also his body was still attached to the head. Yeah, and also didn't they say that the that the miller's arms were at at level with the windmill? The windmill, yeah. Yeah. So I assumed that so, meant like it would be in the center of the windmill, but I guess what they mean is at the very tip of the windmill. How should I know? That's just a wolf's head, right side up and not attached to a wolf's body. <laughs> The villa is divided into three floors and is about as tall as five people. Between the maintenance gondola on the third floor and the window on the second floor is the connecting shaft between the fan blade and the mill. We've... We're advanced is enough Is this to, a game? Yeah. We're advanced enough to have invented bungee jumping, but we still don't have any units of measurements to have the size of a windmill measured. Yeah. It's about this five cats standing on each other's shoulders high. <laughs> the maintenance godzilla is extremely narrow and long and about as wide as an adult's foot. Okay. There was a layer of snow on it, but no footprints. Two ropes were tied at the railing. The left part was covered with snow like the other parts of the railing, and there was no snow on the right part. Oh my god. The detective leaned against the railing and looked down. Under the wooden railing hung the cold body of the miller. 
The rope on the left has only a section of rope head, swaying in the wind like a peddler who dared not go home without a sail. Oh, wow. So, th that's so yeah. much flowery language. Great world building. <laughs> As he tried to lean out farther, the railing creaked under the pressure. The snow fell from the inclined railing, falling and disintegrated in the air. The detective's biological instincts kicked in, and he peed in the snow. <laughs> his, his fur bristling involuntarily. <laughs> he circled and then kicked the snow back a couple times to bury his he, pee. He began marking. <laughs> <laughs> went his pee. <laughs> he pulled back quickly and turned to check the situation at the entrance, putting his right hand inside his coat and grasping the dagger he kept to defend himself from villains. Mm. It was a gift from his first love. Every time he held the dagger, it reminded the temperature of her palm on that fateful day. What? Oh boy. Yeah, I don't know. Words get left out sometimes. Are we listening to a love story or something? Uh, it's definitely more of an or something. <laughs> Please, one elegant is enough! Oh, wow! <laughs> the, the detective turned around and found nothing behind him. <laughs> he went downstairs quietly and found that the two of them were where they were, as if they had not moved. <laughs> he went back to the second floor and looked up from the window, but there was nothing there, so he went back to the first floor, where everyone was where they were. Then he went back to the window. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing my mind, Aaron. <laughs> there hasn't been anything that has changed in like 25 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'm trying to compare this to other games we've played, like uh, the Shadow the Hedgehog game where it immediately drops you into this screaming pandemonium crucible of insanity. <laughs> this, this shit's just flying at you from every direction. There's intense, fast music playing. And then you get a game like this, which is basically like looking at a circle on a piece of paper for three hours. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Except the circle blinks every, uh, yes. every three seconds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there were multiple circles and only one blinks at oh, a time. Jesus. Well, it's like, I, I want to resolve this mystery or whatever, but like, man, we're like, what, 40-something minutes in? I gotta take a wicked shit. <laughs> yeah, and this could easily go on for another 12 hours. <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll just say, if anyone... For, uh, also, why was this a Christmas game? <laughs> like, <laughs> Why is this called Roman's Christmas? <laughs> I was so sure it was gonna be like a fun, wild, like, Christmas adventure with all these furry characters that make out and stuff. <laughs> and man, that wasn't the case at all. Yeah, I'm really this disappointed is... there's not as much. I mean, there was some implication of past relationships with two out of three of these characters, but... Yes. The... <sighs> but certainly nothing to... to get me rock- to get me rocks off. <laughs> as- as the pirates say. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. Next time on Game Grumps, if anybody is familiar with Roman's Christmas, and wants to nudge us to complete Roman's Christmas, please let us know in the comments. Uh, otherwise... I don't, I don't know what to do. Otherwise we here. may just switch to, uh, uh another... Uh, a more spooky Christmas game. Yeah, let's try another Christmas situation going on here, because I'm not... I can't... I don't know if I can... if I'm the one to solve the... the... the murder of the Miller guy who was hung upside down in a windmill, and then there were some guys there who saw it and didn't move, and then there was a rope and one of them was covered in snow and the other wasn't. Can we just look at our... our clues? Uh -huh. Um... I just want to see if they have pictures of, uh, the new characters they mentioned. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, I want to see, if, uh, I wanna see the if, chars. If they're soups cute. Uh, and they're just silhouettes. Dang it. Yeah, all right, then. <sighs> yeah. Well... <laughs> the point is, we had fun? <laughs> 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 oh god, it's the prologue! We're still in the prologue! <laughs>
It's day zero. <laughs> what have we done? Holy crap. All right. All right. Catch you later, everybody. Bye, y'all. I wonder if there's entire YouTube channels just dedicated towards Roman's Christmas Let's Plays. Oh my god, I hope so. Me too. Might watch this in my spare time. <laughs> Later! Bye. Goodness me. I don't think that we've ever had a 50 minute episode of Game Grumps where literally nothing happens. That, that was astonishing. <laughs> Alright, I, I really gotta take a look at the show. I'll be right back. Okay, have fun.